Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to my back to school series. It is August here, which means the stores are full of back to school supplies. Everywhere you look, there are sales on post-it notes, sharpies, pencils, glue sticks. So today I wanna to talk to you about must have homeschool supplies. The items I'm going to talk about today are not planners or pencils or erasers, things that you have to replace year in and year out. None of that, no. These items are things that are more one and done. You buy them once and they are going to serve you well for years and years to come. So grab some coffee and let's jump in. So for those of you who are new around here, my name is Sarah and I have five kids. I have an infant, I have a toddler, I have a teenager, and I have some elementary school kids thrown in there as well. So we are entering into our ninth year of homeschooling and it, it's a lot guys. I, I'm doing first grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, and trying to keep the toddler and baby happy while I'm at it. So today I just want to share with you some of the products and items that I have purchased and collected through the years that have been a blessing to our homeschool that have really helped me out as teacher, as mama, and just made things easier. And so before I get started, I just want to give a little note to brand new homeschoolers out there. Those of you that this is your first or maybe your second year homeschooling. I want you to know that all of the things that I'm showing you today, I gradually collected little by little. I watched for them at second hand stores. I, I bought them used or when they were on clearance or on sale or when we had some extra money in our budget. These are by no means items that you need to go out to start homeschooling and drain your checking account to purchase. I will make sure to link everything in the description box below, but this video is meant to encourage you, inspire you, not to make you feel discontent or like you don't have enough. Okay, so now that we have all of that out of the way, let's talk homeschool supplies. So I've organized my list of these investment school supplies in expense order. I'm going to start with the things that cost the least and end with the Mac Daddy big expensive items. So the first thing on my list are these dry erase pocket sleeves. And as you can see, I even cleaned these up a little bit, but they're, they're pretty dirty. These are very well used in our homeschool. What they are, if you are not familiar with them, are just these clear plastic sleeves that um, have a pocket in them where you can slide in different sheets of paper. I have several that I just use with blank white paper in them and my kids can draw on or write notes on them. I have taken handwriting worksheets and put them in here for my younger kids to work on tracing. I have used maps in these and used them to work on mapping skills. Uh, there, there's just a million uses for these. So they end up being about a dollar a piece. I've also seen them at the Target dollar spot and at the Dollar Tree. Next, I want to talk about laminated placemats. These are some laminated placemats that I have purchased. This one is a world map, and here is one that is the U.S. President's. On the back, it has all of the first ladies. I, guys, I have dozens of these placemats. You can find all kinds of placemats like this covering a very broad range of subject matter that your homeschool is studying. I find these really helpful to use outside of just a placemat for my kids at their school spot. I will hang these on my homeschool wall as visuals. Um, while I'm talking about maps, I would definitely encourage you to purchase some type of map or world globe for your homeschool. While we are on the subject of placemats and just visuals for your homeschool, I would also suggest getting a hundred board, especially if you have younger elementary kids kids, preschoolers. This is something my kids use almost every single day in those early years in math, just practicing their counting, having a visual to look at all of the numbers from one to a hundred. This one in particular, I bought at a homeschool conference. It is just this really nice, thick, plasticky material that you can use a dry erase marker on. My older kids, even in elementary school, used this when they were practicing their multiplication tables. I would have them go through and mark different numbers when they were skip counting, like, you know, 4, 8, 12, 16, 
that kind of thing. They mark all of their, their numbers in the skip counting. So I would definitely encourage you to invest in some type of 100 board. One more item I wanna talk about while we're doing visuals and posters and laminated items. I've talked about this one before. This is my market timeline of history. I purchased this from Rainbow Resource website. Again, I'm gonna link all of these products below, guys, so you can just check them out at the end of the video. But this is awesome. It's a huge poster-sized um, timeline that is laminated. It starts in 4000 BC, goes all the way to 2150 BC. This one side that's kind of this tannish beige brown color is really great just to use a dry erase or wet erase marker to mark different events in history as you're studying them in your homeschool. This makes a great wall hanging for your kids. And then the back side is just a plain white version of the same thing and it's just undated. To be completely honest with you guys, this is actually the second one of these we have purchased in our homeschool. I bought one of these at a conference several years ago and we used it so much we wore it out. I couldn't get the dry erase and things to erase off of it anymore. That's how much we have used and loved this poster in our homeschool. So it, it runs around $10, $12 range. I would definitely encourage you to invest in some type of timeline piece for your homeschool. Okay, next, this may seem a little bit obvious, but not everybody owns one of these, a stapler. Guys, I know this stapler looks small as it is just handheld, but it is mighty. This is the Bow Stitch Mini Heavy Duty Stapler. I think it will staple I, somewhere around 40 pieces of paper at one time. I use this all the time and I love how small it is. I can just stash it in a cabinet or in a drawer. I'm not having to take up any type of counter space for my stapler. So invest in a good stapler. This in particular staple runs around $10. I know that you can find electric ones and, and staplers can cost a lot of money if you want to invest in one, but you, you can just buy a pretty nice simple one. Next, along that same vein, is a three-hole punch. And guys, do not buy those back-to-school cheap three-hole punches that they have available right now in all of the stores. Take some extra money and invest in a nice, heavy-duty one. This is also done by Bow Stitch, and this is just a fantastic three-hole punch. I have had this, I think, going on three years now, and it, it still works great. It does 40 sheets of paper at one time. The next item on my list is a laminator. And guys, I, I'll be honest with you, I have a laminating problem. I am addicted. I, I laminate so many things in our homeschool. It, it's kind of ridiculous. My, it gets on my kids' nerves sometimes. If you have a big family, if you have items that you're gonna wanna last or hand down to multiple kids, laminators are your best friend. They keep things more durable and they honestly are not that expensive. This Scotch laminator I bought on Amazon around $20, $25 and I think I've had it for five or six years now, guys. In particular, when you have younger kids, this is one of the first things I would invest in. Most of the laminators nowadays, they come with these thermal laminating pouches. So simple, it is so easy and I promise you will use it all the time. This next item is something that I just purchased this spring and oh, I wish I would have found this years and years ago. I cannot tell you the number of pencil sharpeners we have gone through in our household. Ugh too many to count. We have burnt some out. We have done, you know, the handheld little mini ones. This bad boy, this is this is definitely going to be worth the money. This in particular pencil sharpener by, I'm gonna say Exacto School Pro, is one of the pencil sharpeners that I see recommended from homeschool moms time and time again. So when I see a homeschool mama recommend it, I, I just tend to trust them. It is really great. It has little suction cups on the bottom, so it really suctions nice to your counter or your table, wherever you're going to store it. It has different size pencil options for when you're sharpening, and it is super easy 
to empty, which, you know, kids, this is a job you're going to have your kids do. You want this to be super simple for them to empty and throw in the trash. I bought this pencil sharpener for around the $25 range on Amazon. Again, linked below. Okay, guys, so I know I admitted to you a minute ago that I have a laminating problem. Well, I, I also have a labeling problem. I love this Brother P Touch label maker. I use it for homeschool. I use it all over my house. I, I am addicted. I label everything, all everything in the kids' closets, all of our bookshelves, everything, every bin. I, I use this label maker for everything. Um, this is definitely not a need for your homeschool. I feel like this is definitely a luxury, but it has made my life so much easier. It has made things so much prettier, and it's something I use a lot now that I own it. So I would definitely say that if you like to label things and stay organized, consider investing in a label maker. They sell them at Costco. I've also, I bought this one online. It was around $30, and I'm able to buy the refills pretty inexpensive on Amazon as well. Okay, another thing that I would definitely encourage you to invest in in your homeschool is some sort of record keeping system. A place where you are going to keep all of your children's completed curriculum, legal records, any correspondence you're doing with your school district, a place to store out all of that. Back in July, I actually did a video devoted completely to this topic and about how we do our homeschool record keeping for long-term storage, so I would definitely direct you there. Essentially, what we use in our house are big hanging file boxes that have lids with hanging file folders and manila folders to keep everything organized. These boxes are something I go to year after year after year to put all of my children's completed work and other things that we need to keep for record keeping in our homeschool. So this is something, especially if you're starting out, this is one of the first things you're gonna want to invest in in your homeschool is some type of record keeping system. Okay guys, this next item is a beautiful one. You have seen these in the background of a lot of my videos. These are my treasures from Jennifer Wooden Boards. If you have not headed to her website, I will link it below. Oh, she has so many beautiful wooden pieces and different things that you can use in your homeschool. These are beautiful, big, thick, heavy duty, durable items that you will use for years and years in your homeschool. They are definitely a little pricey sometimes. They're a little bit of an investment. For instance, this is her reversible number board. As you can see, it has numbers zero through nine on one side and on the back it has um, the same thing with some little places you can put wooden marbles or pom-poms. My kids, when they are in preschool all the way through their early elementary years, um, use this almost on a daily basis for handwriting practice and also just as a nice reference to how the numbers are supposed to look. I love using this just even as a decoration in my homeschool room. They are just beautiful. Another board that I've had for several years from her is this reversible alphabet board. It is the lowercase on one side and the uppercase on the other. I think they are just a beautiful visual to have in your homeschool. They just look great. And again, those early elementary kids, they need to have the availability to look at the alphabet often for handwriting skills. Treasures from Jennifer has all kinds of things on there. I constantly have a running wish list on her website of things that I want to purchase for my kids for Christmas or for their birthdays or maybe if I just have a little extra homeschool budget one month. She has calendars and phases of the moon boards just oh my gosh so many educational boards and different things that you will just love for your homeschool. So I would definitely encourage you not to just always invest in the practical, but sometimes invest in some beautiful things in your homeschool room. So something else I would definitely encourage you to invest in in your homeschool are nature journaling supplies. There are just so many different items that you can use for nature journaling that I'm going to devote an entire video just to, the, maybe actually an entire series to nature journaling and how we do it in our homeschool. But I would definitely tell you just at a basic level, look into investing in some really nice sketchbooks or art books for your kids and some 
pretty nice art supplies. These are things that you will use year after year after year if you do nature journaling in your homeschool. And, and I just honestly, I can't recommend it enough because it has been such a blessing to our homeschool. Another item that I would definitely recommend for you to invest in for your homeschool is a dry erase magnetic board of some sort. You will be surprised how often you want to write notes or draw something up for your children to see as you are teaching. And honestly, the magnetic side of this is great if you have items that you want to just post up for your kids to see, maybe a poster or something that's going along with a curriculum you're wanting to use and have as a visual out all the time. Just this year, I purchased this rustic white magnetic board for our homeschool room. It's, it's pretty large and honestly, guys, we use it multiple times a day. So I know that boards like this can be a little bit pricey, a little bit of an investment. If, if you don't have the funds for that, you can always look at the Dollar Tree. They have little handheld whiteboards that you can purchase. Or like I said at the beginning of the video, you can use those dry erase pocket sleeves instead until you have the funds to buy a nice whiteboard for your school space. Okay, so now we're starting to get into that little bit of a more expensive range. And now I'm going to talk about a Bluetooth speaker or Amazon Echo or, or some type of device like this. Guys, we, we, we have Amazon Echoes in our house. We love them. They are great. And they are such a blessing to our homeschool room. My kids are able to use this device to ask how to spell something. It can be used as a calculator. It can be used for so many things. We use it to listen to music, sometimes classical music or other things in the background. So a Bluetooth speaker or an Echo, Amazon Echo or other similar device out there, oh guys, it will be a game changer in your homeschool. Now, again, like I said, we're Amazon Echo people, so I'm just gonna drop this in here, Audible. We are Audible subscribers, and again, this is definitely an investment in your homeschool. It is around $150 for a year-long subscription to Audible, but guys, this is, oh, it's so worth it, having all of those audiobooks for my kids to listen to day in and day out. In our homeschool, we tend to listen to audiobooks during meals. It's a really great time while my kids are busy with their hands eating to just listen to a book and honestly it gives mama a little bit of quiet. So I would definitely encourage you to think about a Bluetooth speaker and possibly an Audible subscription for your homeschool. The next one I'm going to talk about is the Big Mac Daddy, over $300, my brother printer. I have a brother printer and copy machine slash scanner. Oh my gosh, I think, I think it could launch to the moon. It does so many different things. It is amazing. It is an ink tank style printer, which is definitely the direction I would point anyone if they are shopping for a new printer for their homeschool. You're going to want something that gives you quality print as well as a longevity of your ink because we know replacing ink and printers can be expensive and kind of annoying. So just do your research, look at YouTube videos, whatever, no matter what printer you buy, just you know, really think about how long-term you are going to be using that printer in your home school. All right, so I saved the biggest and the best for last books. Now, I know that what you're thinking, wait a minute, books books aren't more expensive than a printer. Yes, you're right. One book is not more expensive than an entire printer. However, there's a reason why I tend to do a lot of my videos with my, you know, bookshelves in the background. We have like a little mini library in our home. Through the years, my husband and I have collected a lot of books and I, I mean a lot you see a lot here behind me but we honestly have bookshelves in almost every room in our house and I just books are one of the best investments that you can make in your home school now I would tell you you can definitely use your local library I would tell you to also look at garage sales thrift stores, second-hand stores, second-hand bookstores, you can find really nice books for really decent prices. I can't tell you the amount of books I have in this house that I bought for a quarter or 50 cents or a dollar. I mean, big, nice, thick reference books that I got really cheap. So just be patient and 
don't try to build a library overnight. It's going to take you some time. We've been working at it for nine, 10 plus years now. When you are buying books though, I would definitely give you this as a litmus test of sorts. I do not purchase books unless I know we are going to read that book over and over and over again. So the Little House on the Prairie series, the Narnia series. I know that I'm gonna use those as read alouds. I know that each of my kids are probably going to read those independently on their own. I've shown you guys before my boxcar series and how my kids have just almost made the cover fall off some of the books because we've read them so many times. I try to only invest in books that I know we're going to use over and over again in our homeschool. If it's not a book that we're gonna use a lot, then that's what I use my local library for. Um, we have a lot of picture books. I love picture books. And honestly, Sarah McKenzie with the Read Aloud Revival, if you haven't heard of her, I will link her podcast and her website below. Go check her out. She will just definitely address this subject so much better than I will. But reading aloud to your kids, making reading a part of the culture of your home is just such a wonderful investment in your homeschool. Okay guys, well, I think that's where I'm gonna wrap things up. I know that I could have talked about a lot of other different types of products and things that you could use in your homeschool, but this is my list for this year, the list of must-have homeschool supplies, those investment staple pieces that you can purchase for your homeschool that is going to make your, your school experience easier and more fun and sometimes more beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Tell me what items that you have in your homeschool that are must have items that were maybe an investment for you that you just can't live without. I'm always looking for new ideas. Uh, so please just leave me a comment below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Like I mentioned before, this is part of my back to school series. So I have a lot of new videos coming again. My name is Sarah. I'm with Everyday Homeschooler. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.